Hi, everyone. As Ed mentioned, my name is Dan Morris, and I'm from Viacom. And today, myself and my colleague Amelia Chu, also from Viacom, will share with you our experience scaling self-service analytics with Databricks and Spark. Now, over the past many years, there's been an increase in demand for none other than unicorns. I'm sure you've seen this as well. It happens at companies, both big and small. And I'm sure that we have many of you here with us today. The reason for this is simple. Businesses today need to move faster than ever before. And in order to move fast, our business leaders need answers to questions as quickly as they think of them. But we all know when you answer one question, you inevitably lead to a dozen more questions. And in the interest of moving fast and being nimble, it doesn't matter who performs what function in order to get to your answers. What matters is that you get to those answers as quickly as you possibly can. And so it's only natural that the demand for unicorns is on the rise. But there's a challenge. Most unicorns today don't actually want to be unicorns. What they want is for their stakeholders to be able to answer the questions that they have by themselves. They, they instead of automating reports or fielding ad hoc queries, they want to be doing data science. And to do this, what they want, again, they want their business users to be able to answer their own questions quickly and independently so that they can spend their time answering the questions that they have on the data science. So how do we do this? Well, what we need are data engineers. But herein lies another challenge. Our data engineers today are increasingly spread thin. With traditional reporting and business intelligence on one side, and our advanced analytics and personalization on the other, our data engineers are now stretched thin, trying to support a diverse array of users. Additionally, they're trying to support an increasingly complex tech stack. But there is, of course, a solution. What if our data engineers could support both our non-technical users and our data scientists with a single platform and a single code base? And what if these non-technical users could answer their questions by themselves quickly and independently? This, in turn, would let the data scientists focus exclusively on data science. Now this is exactly what we have done at Viacom. Over the past year, we've been laser focused on building out self-service capabilities using Apache Spark and Databricks. Now, if you've ever clicked play on a video and got frustrated by how long it took to see that first frame of content, or you're watching a great scene and you finally get to the payoff only to see a spinning circle because your video player didn't buffer enough content, then you know exactly the types of problems that we set out to solve. And with that, Amelia will now demonstrate exactly how we solved for this by rolling out self-service capabilities using Apache Spark and Databricks. All right, thank you, Dan. Um, so as Dan mentioned, there are a couple of metrics that we really pay attention to, like time to first frame, buffering time, and other various errors. And these are something that our data scientists and as well as our product managers on our video team are very um, attentive of. 
So to solve for this, we developed using Spark and Databricks a solution that helps enable these users to not only drill down to those specific issues that may come up, but also help them help prioritize new features in a data-driven way. As a matter of fact, um, we've been able to use this particular framework to get time to first frame down to a third about of what it was. And our framework consists of parameterized dashboards, which are powered by our UDF library. So within our parameterized dashboards, our product managers are able to slice and filter the data in any way they would like to look at the metrics of interest. On top of that, just like traditional BIs, they can use this to narrow down issues and also drill down to new insights. So behind the scenes, you'll notice that these charts are all fueled by a particular set of functions. And these functions are powered by the UDF library. So within the UDF library, we have c consolidated some metrics and come up with a singular calculation for these metrics of interest, collaborating with other people on the way. And obviously, the actual calculations involved a lot more comments and revisions than this. So not only do these UDF um, functions are used for parameterized dashboards, but they're also used by our data scientists to do more um, deeper models using the metrics that we've developed in these libraries. So then from our non-technical users to our data scientists, we are all using the same standard metrics as is shown in this neural net notebook. All right. So with our parameterized dashboards, we enable our non-technical users to quickly and independently get to the insights that they need. F thus, freeing up our data scientists from automated reporting so they can spend more time building and focusing on those models and analyzing that data. With our centralized UDF library, we come up with standard definitions. This means that the data scientist has less time to prep the data, right? So then in that, in that sense, they have time to prep more models. And on the data engineering side, now they can support both our non-technical audience and our data scientists from a singular code base and platform. So thus, through our experience, we've learned not to look for or impose the unicorn role on any of our team members. But instead, we want to develop a framework for a singular platform that satisfies needs from the non-technical to the data scientist, and thus ultimately reducing the fragmentation of the stack. Thank you.